President Biden's Energy Department reportedly funneling $10 million to a China-backed green energy company. And those funds were sent over after the company partnered with a Chinese oil conglomerate that just so happened to receive $1.7 billion in investments from Hunter Biden's private equity firm back in 2015. Dr. Kevin Roberts, president of the Heritage Foundation, joins us now. Dr. Roberts, some people would look at that timing and say it's suspicious. <laughs> to say the least. And, you know, I, I was thinking this morning as I was reading the facts of this for the third time that it's like we're living in a dystopian novel. But I'm, I'm sorry. I really am sorry as a proud American to report it's all true. And the reason it's true is that this administration has set up an annex of the White House in Beijing. And two subsidiaries of that CCP-owned petroleum company are, are, are running, basically, these efforts. And so Hunter Biden has got to be investigated. Thankfully, the House Republicans are coming in with those plans. But I'll also say this, Carly, it's really important to note. There are rank-and-file agents in the FBI who are aware of what's going on, and we need them to stand up and do what's right for America and throw the flag and say it is time to bring this administration to account. The Heritage Foundation will always give them cover with our great analysts and researchers, and this is a cause of American national security. Yeah, you know, on the one hand, the president is spending billions of dollars on the Chips and Sciences Act uh, to compete with China. And then on the other, he now has a history of giving money to companies with ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Is that normal? Because that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> no, it's, it's not normal at all. I mean, j just in case someone's watching and wondering about that, it is completely unprecedented. It, it likely is towing the line of treason, a word that I, I don't use lightly. You know that at Heritage, we wouldn't say something like that if there weren't substance for it. And I want to be clear, it's really important when the House Republicans come into office in a few weeks that they have an agenda that's aspirational about the future and not 100 percent about investigations. But in this case, for obvious reasons, it's really clear they need to use the power of oversight and the power of investigations to, as my colleagues like to say, show the receipts. And then we actually need to do something about it, going back to my point about the FBI also doing the right thing. Dr. Roberts, uh, let's talk about what's going on in California. There are three different guaranteed income initiatives in San Francisco that exclude white residents. And the initiatives are the Black Economic Equity Movement, which provides $500 a month exclusively to black young adults. There's also the Abundant Birth Project, which gives 1000 bucks to a month to black and Pacific Islander mothers, and the Guaranteed Income for Transgender People Program, which will dole out $1,200 a month and prioritize enrollment of trans transgender, black, indigenous, or people of color. And now you have lawyers that are saying, hey, hang on a second, there are laws that ban programs that favor one race over the other. So is this legal? <laughs> it's not only not legal, it's sad, it's, it's tragic, and I would even say that it's evil for this reason. You know, I'm a historian. You remember sitting in, in history classes, Carly, where hopefully your teacher or professor said one of the greatest achievements in the United States of America is the 14th Amendment. 620,000 fellow Americans gave their lives over a conflict, the Civil War, that produced, thankfully, the 14th Amendment. It is considered by historians, political scientists across the political spectrum, our crowning achievement. What something like this in San Francisco does is say all of that should be thrown out. And it should be thrown out because now they want to, as they would say, define everyone by their race or by being transgender. This is precisely the kind of thing that's wrong with modern America. And not to mention that just on the economic side, when you guarantee people an income, yeah. guess what they don't do? They don't work. show up for work. Yeah. So there's nothing about this that makes sense. You're absolutely right. It's the, the issue of do government handouts really benefit low-income people, making them more reliant on the federal government. Historically, it seems to not be beneficial. Dr. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to be with you. Take care.